Welcome to section 2.11, Organization of Cells. Uh, in this section, we're really just going to kind of rehash in some cases and just extend this idea of organization from simple unicellular organisms all the way up into multicellular organisms and just kind of explain how this may have happened, like how we might have gotten multicellularity from what were previously unicellular organisms. This will also wrap up pretty much everything with cells that we're going to discuss prior to cell transport, which will be how we get stuff that we need into the cell, how we get stuff we don't need out of the cell, and how our body kind of balances the amount of things. So the picture here just shows the various parts of our bodies. So we are a multicellular organism. We have cells, like a hundred trillion of them, so a lot of cells. Uh, we're going to have where those cells will get together to form tissues. Those tissues form organs. Those organs form organ systems. And that all together makes up us. And so this just labels a bunch of the different organs that we have within our body, which themselves organize into systems with each other and are built by these smaller tissues bonding together to make the organ. So we are ultimately a masterpiece of organization to allow us to exist as we are. Now, starting more towards the bottom, when you have organization, the first place you have organization is cells. So if we look at a single cell, we will have organization inside of that cell, specifically in the organelles and the structures that we've talked about. So we've discussed this idea of the cytoskeleton, the plasma membrane, you know, the various types of endoplasmic reticulum, the nucleus, the mitochondria. Even in a prokaryote, you have the ribosomes, you have various sections of the cytoplasm where the DNA is, where other specific enzymes are. So we are going to have organization even inside of our cells. So even the simplest unicellular organisms still have, and we've been discussing, organization inside of them. Now, if we ramp this up, we can start to talk about organisms uh, and how we can organize beyond just having a single-celled organism. And so if we start to group cells together, we get multicellularity. Now, multicellularity does not appear to have just poof happened. It's not like suddenly a bunch of cells got together and we're just like, let's stitch ourselves together, Mighty Morphin Power Ranger style, and just make this really cool multicellular organism. No. What appears to have happened is that some single-celled organisms kind of got together. Because when they were together, they were able to do things they couldn't on their own. So it might be like this is Volvox, a type of algae, and so these Volvox guys will ultimately get together, they will uh, beat their flagella and such to allow them to move around, to stay in the light, so they can photosynthesize, so they can stay in the right homeostatic conditions. And so when they work together, their life was easier. So this is kind of like where you might go and get an apartment or a condo because it's more inexpensive than getting a house. So you're still working with the other people, the other places around you, but it's not as though you are completely dependent upon them. And that's the idea of this colonial theory, that we do have some sim simple organisms that form stuff like biofilms, which are sheets of cells that will work together. They'll actually specialize somewhat, where they will like say, all right, I'll do this, you do this, and we'll kind of share. But I could take anybody from that biofilm, what we call a colonial organism, I could take any individual cell and just kind of send them off on their own and they'd still be fine. So this is once again like the apartment analogy where you can gladly work with and live with those people in the apartment for your benefit. But it's not like I can't move you somewhere else or you die. You know, that's a really weird apartment. You know, this is like a horror movie uh, if this is an apartment that you can't leave and still live. And that's what, how colonial organisms work. When we start to talk about true multicellularity, it's not going to be just about, I'll specialize while we're together, but I can still kind of go on my own. When we talk about true multicellularity, this is where if I try to go on my own, I'm going to die. You know, I can't just take a chunk of your liver and then just set it down in the chair, you know, at your dinner table and be like, don't worry, he'll be fine. You know, wait six months and we'll have a little like, kid sitting there. No, the tissue will die. It depends upon all the other parts of your body working together with it to be able to live. So imagine where it's like a cell that previously, you know, a unicellular organism can do everything. It can, it can be a bachelor. You know, it can take care of the laundry, it can take care of the food, cleaning, job, all the things needed to live. Now, once you're with somebody, 
you might start to kind of differentiate things where I do the trash and this person does the lawn and this person cooks. And so as you specialize, imagine in a multicellular organism, you completely forget and are incapable of all the other stuff you used to do. And so you no longer can cook the food in this case. And so if I take you away from the person who cooks for you, you would starve to death. And that's what we see with true multicellularity. So the colonial theory states that things got together because it was beneficial. Everybody was happy. So they specialized a bit, they worked together, and they were able to be more evolutionarily successful. Less energy was expended, they lived longer, had more kids, used, you know, overall got more energy and used less energy. So this was a good situation for them. And at some point, these guys kept working together for long enough, kept being specialized for long enough, that they had to be together. They had to work together. Otherwise, they weren't capable of going on. And so Volvox is not going to be multicellular because we can break it apart. And you can see that it actually forms little spheres inside. So these ones eventually can kind of go out on their own. So these make new Volvox colonies, which can then have their own little mini colonies that spread. And so while this process is very successful for them, the Volvox is not dependent on any of the other Volvoxes. And so that's what our metric is when we decide is something colonial or is something multicellular. Colonial guys can go on their own. They don't have to if we kind of just draw things together. If it's colonial, they technically can go their own way. They don't have to kind of stay together. That was terrible. Uh, whereas when we have these guys, if they're multicellular, they have to stay together. They have no option of leaving. So that's just our, our metric for deciding whether something is multicellular or is not. And then when we look at multicellular organisms, so if we do take something and we go beyond the cellular level, so we know we've got cells can be a complete acceptable organism. You don't have to have more than one cell. But if we do take this further, we'll see that we do have organization even in how we organize the cells. So inside a cell there's organization, amongst cells there's organization if you're multicellular especially. And so starting off we will see some multicellular things where there are no true tissues. There aren't groups of cells that kind of share tasks where the labor is kind of divided up much more minutely and so we don't get like a big chunk of stuff that's like I'll be skin, you know, or a big chunk of stuff that says I'll be a liver. And so there are some organisms, if we use animals here, that have no true tissues. They don't have groups of cells that share a task. Uh, the one I can tell you is sponges. You know, you don't look at a sponge and just be like, oh yeah, you know, that's its heart. Uh, no, they're a bunch of cells that just kind of work together and they do have some specialization, but they don't have like this, this tremendous amount of organization. They're dependent on each other, where I can't just take an individual sponge cell and it'll be fine on its own. But they don't have this level of organization that's as complex as we get later. And then we have tissue development with things like jellyfish. And so jellyfish, sea anemones, these guys start to have tissues. So some basic muscular-like tissue, nervous-like tissue. But they don't really have like full-fledged organs or organ systems. So they now have like groups of similar cells doing certain functions, these specialized cells, but they still haven't made that leap to kind of stitching those tissues together to form specialized, more elaborate structures. And so that comes in with organs and organ systems, which we see with pretty much all the other animals. So we've got organs, we've got organ systems, reptiles, amphibians, fish, octopi, you know, most of the things that you can think of will have organs and organ systems where the tissues can get together to form these more elaborate specialized structures and then these more elaborate organs can get together to form even more elaborate systems like our digestive system where our esophagus takes food to our stomach, our stomach initially dumps a bunch of acid and some enzymes on it to kind of cut it up into smaller pieces. Our small intestine dumps a whole bunch more enzymes and cuts it up into really small pieces and absorbs it. And then your large intestine would absorb the salt and the water that's left over and then ultimately house the waste until you get rid of it. So they all work together where it's not just one organ saying, oh yeah, I'll cut up the food. It's a series of things that all work together to get one task done, one specialized task of digestion and absorption. They're not doing like your lung action. You're not going to like get your oxygen through your digestive tract. You shouldn't try either. You can hurt yourself if you get a whole bunch of air uh, in your digestive tract. So please don't say like I'm breathing here and try to in any way pump air into your 
vowels. Uh, but each part of our body is going to have its own set thing. And that's what we see, its own set function. And that is this idea of organization. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys soon.